Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, I'm God's powerful champion, and because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. Say Amen. It's good, good, good to celebrate. Today I'm going to talk about imagination. If you want to have a best year, you need to imagine. Everybody say, imagination. And here's my one big message. Everybody say, I'm listening. Paint beautiful paintings. Everybody say that with me. Tell somebody beside you, nudge that person, elbow him and, and her, or tell that person, paint beautiful paintings. Brother Bo, I'm not a painter. Yes, you are. You're a painter. I'm a painter. Ask me how. You're a painter. I'm a painter because every single thought in your mind is a brush stroke in the canvas of your imagination. Did you hear me? Let me say that again. Just, just, just let it sink in. Every single thought in your mind is a brush stroke in the canvas of your imagination. And that canvas is magical. Everybody say magical. It's magical because what you imagine, what you paint in the canvas of your imagination can appear in your reality. You know, we are the only species that God created on planet Earth that can imagine a future scenario. Are there pet lovers here? Raise your hand. You've got a pet? Dogs? Cats? Crocodiles? You know, whatever pet you have, I'm telling you now, no matter how intelligent they look like, you know, cats, they, they look intelligent, right? They really do. You, you know, you come home and the dog is just welcoming you, you know, wagging his tail, jumping up and down. The cat, you enter the house, the cat looks at you and then snubs you. It's just like, like I'm so intelligent. Like, but you know what? No matter how, in, how, how that cat of yours, you think it is intelligent, it cannot, it cannot imagine a future scenario. Your cat cannot say, Five years from now, I want to eat Spanish sardines, you know. And then the, the cat will try to imagine. It, it can't. It cannot imagine the way you and I do. Now, here's the thing. God has given us this beautiful capacity to imagine, but he gave us two, two capacities, actually. The first one is the ability to paint the present. Everybody say, paint the present. We have the ability to paint our reality. And, and, and that's a good thing. But he also gave us the ability to paint the future. Everybody say, paint the future. You need both. Our problem is this. There are so many people who use only the first capability. They just love to paint the present. They just paint reality. And you know what? It's not imagination, really. It's more of description. You just want to describe. The crazy thing about this is, if you have the ability to paint the present, what happens is you just look at the present and, and, and you look at the weaknesses. Usually you're more biased to the negative. You look at what's wrong and, and, and you paint what's wrong. And in 2016, how many of you, be honest with me, you, you, you went through some rough times in 2016. Raise your hand if, if, if you... If you, yeah, so some people hurt you in 2016. Some people rejected you in 2016. You went through failure in 2016. You had some relationship problems in 2016. And, and the thing is, the thing is, you can just paint reality. You can paint the present and, and that's all that's going to happen. Guess what? There is no hope there. There's no hope. And when there's no hope, my friend, you need hope to live. You understand me? Let's, let's, can, can I show what you're painting? 
Okay, here it is. Here it is. Ready? Ta da! Yeah, look, look, looks like him. Paint the present. It's needed. You don't want to deny what's happening to you. You don't want to die. But if all you do is paint the present, it'll be difficult to move on. There are people here in this room. There are people here in this room. You're stuck in 2016. You were so hurt and you were so bombarded by problems in 2016. You can't move on. Why? Because you're just painting the present. I've got news for you. God has a beautiful future for your life. And you need to learn how to paint the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. This guy over here, he's painting the future. He's painting the future. Wow. Can, can I show to the audience? Wow. Does it look realistic? He was so sad in that chair. How did you see this? Gosh. Do you agree with this guy? Now, listen to me. When you paint the future, this is what happens. You begin to be biased about the possibilities. And what happens is, he's dressing up. He's actually dressing up. He's got shoes on. Once upon a time, he didn't have shoes. Painting the future means your imagination is not only describing what's happening, your imagination will impact your present and will create something new. Do I hear a loud amen? Thank you guys. Thank you so much. You know, if right now you're still stuck in what happened in 2016, that's it. You're going to go through 2017 with the same mindset. And you're going to say, oh no, I can't move on. But I want you to start imagining victory in 2017. I want you to imagine. You know, I love Audie's illustration about the ball. Yes? That you need to bounce. If, if you had a hard life last year, let it be the foundation for you to bounce up strong. And I want you to, if, if your relationship didn't work out last year, I want you to realize this. With a dose of love, with a dose of humility, and with a dose of forgiveness, your relationships will be victorious this coming year. I want you to believe in that. I want you to claim that. And I, I also want you to believe, if your finances were bad last year, I, I, want you to, I want you to say, that was last year. This year is a new year. And I'm making a decision. I'm going to take steps. I'm going to, and I want you to imagine the abundance of God flowing into your life. I want you to think of that. I want you to hold someone's hand, please. Hold someone's hand. T tell that person. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze that hand. Look that person in the eye. And tell that person your future is so beautiful. I, I want you to believe in that. And I want you to imagine... There was an Australian psychologist by the name of Alan Richardson, and he had this crazy experiment that he did. Alan Richardson, he went into a school and at random just chose a bunch of students, and what he did was he brought them all to the basketball court, and then he formed them into three groups, group one, group two, and group three. And then group one, he told them, guys, I want you to practice, everybody say practice, free throws every day for 20 days. And then I want to see if you improve. And so this bunch of students, you know, said, okay, we're going we're, we're gonna to do this experiment. Every single day, they reported to the basketball court, they shot some free throws, and, and you know, did it for 20 days. 
And then he goes to the second group and he says, guys, I want you to shoot a free throw on day one. And then on day 20, I want you to come back to the basketball court and then shoot some free throws. And then the student said, what will we do from day two to day 19? And Alan Richardson said, nothing. Go your merry way. Don't do a thing from day two to day 19. And then he got a third bunch of kids, of students, and he said, this is what you do. I want you to shoot your free throw on day one and day 20. And the students ask, what will we do from day two to day 19? Ask me what? He said, imagine. Don't hold the ball. No, 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 no. What I want you to do is go to your room every day and imagine being in the basketball court. You're in your bedroom, but imagine you're in the basketball court. Imagine that you're standing on the wooden floor. Imagine that you're holding that leather ball. Let it dribble the ball in your mind. Hear the ball dropping on the floor, bouncing on the floor. Hear, hear, hear the crowd around you. Hold that ball and then shoot those free throws in your mind from day two and day three and day four, five, six, seven, all the way to 19. And then report to the basketball court on day 20 and shoot free throws. Do you know what happened at the end of the experiment? Do you want to you know the results? Yes. You want to know? Yes. Okay, I'll tell you next week. Uh, you really want to know? Yes. Pressure me. Brother Ball. Brother Ball. Okay, here we go. Group one. They practice every day, yes? You know the improvement was phenomenal. 24% accuracy improvement. 24% just practicing after 20 days, their performance improved by 24%. I want you to elbow somebody really hard and tell that person, practice. That's, that, that, that's, how, it, that's how you get better. You, just by doing it. Doing it. Now, you know, you know what happened to group two? Ask me what? You know, how, how the group, you, you know what group two did, right? What did group two do? Shout it out. What did group two do? <laughs> Nothing. You know their improvement? Nothing as well. No surprise there. Guys, if you don't do anything, nothing will happen to your life. Yes or no? Yes. You don't want to be group two, please. Group three. Now that was phenomenal. Let me review. In group three, they shot balls on the first day. Just as a baseline measurement, yes? They went back to the basketball court. Day 20, shot balls, right? Day 2 to day 19, what did they do? They just imagined shooting balls. Their improvement? 23%. You don't believe me. It's documented. It's documented. 23%. It's almost like group one. They didn't have to break sweat. They did not sweat. Can you imagine? They did not get dirty. They were just in their pajamas, imagining. And they improved almost like group one. That's how powerful your imagination is. My dear friends, if it works in basketball, it works anywhere. Think with me. Why, why can I preach this way with confidence? Ask me why. Because before I step on stage, every single time I'm at the feast, before I step on stage, I'm imagining myself preaching to you. In fact, I imagine myself preach to you four times. Today, I'm preaching you my fifth talk. It's, it's exactly like that. It's imagining what's happening and, and seeing. And, and when you do that in anything, now think about it. You can imagine your future. And it has a tremendous impact on your life. You've got to be able to paint that beautiful picture. Now listen to me. This, this imagination thing, 
It's a loaded gun. It's so powerful, you can use it for bad, you can use it for good. You can use it for evil. Hitler. Hitler killed 6 million Jews and 6 million other Europeans. 12 million people. Now think with me. What was his most potent, deadliest weapon ever? Was it a gas chamber? Was it the bloody concentration camps? Was it the barbaric prison? No, no, no. His deadliest weapon. Ask me what? His imagination. He imagined all of Europe under the Nazi regime. He imagined the concentration camps. He imagined the the death of Jews. He imagined. That's how powerful it is. Today, I stand before you imagining a bright future. I I stand before you imagining a 100,000 feasts all over the world. I'm imagining that some of you here clapping your hands, will be leading feasts in your homes and in your offices. Silence. (laughs) You know, I I believe that. I really, really do. Because, you know, you, you come here, you sit down, you enjoy the message, you love the singing, the worship, you go home and you say, wow, that's good. I'm recharged. Next week, You come back again, you sit down again, you you listen, absorb the talk, you absorb the energy, you worship God, and then you go home and you say, I'm recharged. Recharged for what? Why not serve during the week? Why not build your own feast? I just talked to a 16-year-old girl a few weeks ago. She told me, Tito Bo, my mother started a feast video in her office 20 people came. It's our third meeting. Tito Bo, my mom told me to lead worship for the feast video. Tito Bo, I could not believe it. This is a 16-year-old girl sharing. While I was leading, can you just imagine she was leading a group of adults? Yes or no? It's the office mates of her mom. 16-year-old, she said, when I started leading worship, I opened my eyes, I saw People crying. Wow. You think you only cry here in the big feast? No. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. And when you build a small feast in your home or in your office, the Holy Spirit will work there and, and use you. You, you, know why the, you know why there are now 285 feasts around the world? It started here in the imagination. And now it's a reality. Do you know why I believe there are going to be, there's going to be 100,000 feasts? Because we're imagining it. And I'm painting that picture in your imagination. Do you see yourself leading that feast? Do you see yourself serving that small feast? It's happening. It's happening right now. I, I just want to end. Put your hand over your chest. Everybody say this after me. I'm a prophet. One more time. I'm a prophet. Brother Bo, a prophet is somebody who predicts the future. Diba? Well, I have a new definition of a prophet. Ask me what? Complete sentence. What is a prophet? A prophet does not predict the future. A prophet produces the future. You produce it. Remember that, that, that painting that I held and how he started wearing his barong Tagalog? Same thing. Prophesy through your words and through your imagination. You know what? You can make a dream board. Everybody say dream board. Are there people here who brought their dream boards? Are there? Could you raise it? Lift it up? I want you to, I want you to show it to the world. Come on. Show it. Yeah, cameraman, can you just show? You know what a dream board is? It's an illustration board or, or some, some piece of paper and then you start putting photos and you start drawing and putting words. Lift it up, lift, lift it up. Come on, come on, lift it up. Yes, be proud of your dreams. The camera will, sh- will, will capture that. I, all I see is up there. There, there, there it is. There it is, wonderful. Wow. You want to have a transport fleet. Thank you. Um, for the next few Sundays of, of, Janu- of January, for the, for, for the whole series, best year ever, bring your dream boards. Every Sunday, bring it and then lift it up, okay? 
I'm going to call on a dear friend. She's going to stand here on stage. She's going to share to you her experience of dream boards. Please welcome my dearest, dear, dear friend, Penny Bongato. Thank you, Brother Bo. Good morning. My name is Penny Bongato. I work in a BPO association. I'm a part-time faculty at De La Salle College of St. Benil. I'm a certified Canfield Success Principles trainer. I'm a lifelong learner and a dreamer. I am blessed with a loving family, my husband, Sammy, my children, Miko and Mikey, Miguel and Chet, Paolo and Leah. I've been attending the feast since 2011. And for the first time when I attended the feast then, I felt different. I felt I was home. Like many of us, or like all of us, and for the first-timers, you will get this, the novena to God's love. So when I went home, I read the novena, and I thought of, about, I thought of my dreams. What are my dreams? So I wrote my dreams in that novena, and every Sunday, I would come here and raise that, lift that novena and declare that the Lord is helping us, that the Lord is helping me making my dreams come true. In 2014, I attended a workshop entitled Breakthrough to Success by Jack Canfield. Jack Canfield is the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul and is author of The Success Principles. We talked about how to get from where you are to where you want to be. We talked about how to fulfill our dreams and life purpose, goal setting, visualization, imagination, feeling the feeling, and of course, taking action and having an attitude of gratitude. When the, purpose, when the life purpose exercise was there, I asked myself, what is my life purpose? What did God create me in this world to do? I realized that my life purpose was to share with others my blessings. My life purpose is to be able to inspire and help others be the best that they can be. My life purpose is to help others make their dreams come true. And I also realized that that workshop is something that I want to do for the Filipinos. I wanted to be a trainer of the success principles. So during the break time of one of those five-day workshop, I gave my phone or I handed my phone to one of my colleagues. And I went up stage and I asked, I pretended that I was conducting the workshop. So that photo that you see is pretend only. Pang photo op. Pang photo op lang yun. But that was created so that I can just not just imagine, but really feel it. Really imagining it deep in my heart. I went home that after that workshop and created my 2015 vision board. And my vision board included simple things like running a, running a 5K race, being certified in the success principles, doing my own workshop, being healthy, having a lot of money, of course, and having my own company. I imagined it. I read, read my dream board every day. I looked at my, my gratitude journal as well. And I was confirming, affirming that it was happening to me now. So what did I achieve in 2015? I said I will run a 5K race. And did I run a 5K race? So I did run a 5K race. And I finished and I planted in my mind that I'll run my 5K race in May. However, I finished it in October. So never mind the, five, the many months delay, I still completed it. And if you take a look at that picture, the body is not mine. Oh, oh ibang body yan. Dinagay ko lang yung picture ko. So if you want to do your dream board, that's a strategy. I also wanted to become a certified Canfield trainer so that I can teach this workshop here in the Philippines. I want to be certified. And I was able to do that. I achieved my certification. 
and August 8th of 2015, months ahead of my schedule. I also wanted to conduct this workshop for Filipinos by December 30, 2015. And I was able to do that, my first public workshop on October 17, 2015, at the Philippine Bible Society. 2016 is a different year. In 2016, I had my contribution and community goal of being able to share at Aspicio de San Jose. Every year, my family and I would go to Aspicio for the past six years. But last year, we wanted it to be more grand. We wanted to be able to help others feel what we have felt. Being able to share with others the feeling of blessing others as well. And I was fortunate enough to get other families to join us in that sharing. What is my 2017 goals? Of course, like some of you, I have my own vision board for 2017. And my vision board has a lot. It has 10 items there. But my top three. First, my family. I am happy and grateful that I am bonding with my family and with our new grandchild. That picture is picture of my children and picture of my family. If you see that baby, that baby is not ours. Pretend lang yan kasi ang aking mother, uh, daughter-in-law ay mga anak pa lang. So really pretend, imagine, and I can feel it that we will be bonding closely this year. My second dream is to be able to publish my book called Career Shift. And I was able to do I feel I can do this because I was able to do a lot more last year when my story, Proudly Filipino, was published in Jack Canfield's book, Living the Success Principles. And my last, third, is being here today, sharing with you. It has always been my dream to share at the feast. Madaming beses ko kinulit si Brother Bo. Brother Bo, can you help me make my dream come true? And it's only January 8th, and now my dream has come true. So thank you, Brother Bo, and of course, thank you, Lord. These dreams that I have, you know, in pa painting the dreams in your mind, putting it in canvas, putting in it in photos, and being able to feel it, please remember that all these dreams are not my dreams alone. These dreams are dreams that have been put in my heart by the Lord. I have been blessed, and I want to share the blessings with others. Every morning, I read, I look at my vision board, my dream board. I read everything that's written there and feel it already. And I also say, thank you, Lord, for the overflowing blessings in my life. Thank you, Lord, for putting these dreams in my heart. Thank you, Lord, for making my dreams come true. I lift all my dreams to you. And I know that 2017 is, and I'm declaring it, is my best year ever. Thank you. May I invite you to lift your hands up? All, your, all those with dream boards, might as well lift them up as well as a symbol of your future. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. I bring before you my future. My dear friends, I want you to imagine, start imagining your future. Start imagining the victory that will happen this coming year in specific areas of your life. Your, your most important area is your spiritual life, your, your love for God. Imagine yourself loving God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Imagining, imagine God blessing you in this specific area. Your relationship will God, with God will go closer, tighter. I want you to imagine yourself serving Him, serving Him in some way where, where you're able to share God's love to people. That when people see you, they will see Jesus. I, I want you to also to imagine 
your relationships having more forgiveness more tenderness more compassion more mercy imagine all your relationships your friendships your family overflowing with love I want you to imagine school, work, finances receiving the abundance of God debts being paid new income streams more income so you can help more people I want you to imagine every other area of your life experiencing victory say this after me Jesus I surrender my whole life to you I'm surrendering my imagination I'm surrendering to you my future I trust you Amen let's lift up our hands to God as a sign that we are surrendering all our